Hi, Terry Shanefelt from UAB School of Medicine. Outcomes from randomized controlled trials are commonly summarized and reported as relative risk reductions. Relying solely on a relative risk reduction, though, can be misleading. I'll explore why during this video. Patients with congestive heart failure were enrolled in two separate studies of a similar duration to evaluate the effect of two drugs on hospitalization for congestive heart failure. And the results are shown below. In study one, Fixitan was compared to placebo and it reduced hospitalization rates by an impressive 60%. Study two, Correctopril was compared to placebo and it reduced hospitalization rates by 35%. So most people are going to choose Fixitan because it has a greater relative reductions in hospitalization than Correctopril does. Now relative reductions are all around us. This bacon reduces sodium by 50%. If you buy a new arrival, they're 33% cheaper. This particular food product gives 50% more. And here, Lipitor reduces the risk of heart attack by 36%. The key question you need to ask yourself, though, whenever you see these relative reductions, is where did this reduction start from? But relative risk reductions are commonly reported because doctors and people in general understand this concept pretty well. Also, the numbers tend to be more impressive. Relative risk reductions tend to be larger numbers than absolute risk reductions. So to remind you of the formulas, a relative risk reduction is the, in the numerator, there's the control event rate or the rate in the control group minus the experimental event rate divided by the control event rate. Absolute risk reductions is the absolute difference in event rates between the control arm and the experimental arm. Now let's look at that table again and see if we come to a different conclusion. So again, study one compared Fixitan to placebo and re reduced hospitalization by 60%. Correctopril was compared to placebo in study two and reduced hospitalization by 35%. But let's remember we have to look at where we start from. So let's look at the hospitalization rates. And where we start from is the placebo rates. So you can see the placebo rates in study two are much higher than that in study one. So these are much sicker patients. They're hospitalized much more frequently. The absolute differences are much larger in study two, actually, than in study one. And this corresponds to much less people who need to be treated to prevent one excess hospitalization by giving Correctopril than placebo. So now you're going to choose Correctopril because it has a greater absolute reduction in event rates. You have to treat less people to prevent hospitalization than with Fixitan. And this goes to show relative risk reductions can be misleading. So don't always focus on what's reported or told to you either in an ad or um, by a salesman. Look for yourself to see the absolute reductions in event rates. Calculate the numbers needed to treat. It will help you make a better decision on prescribing and help you counsel your patients better for them to better understand and for you to better understand the true impact of the intervention. This video has helped you understand why relying solely on relative risk reductions for making clinical decisions can be misleading. Remember, if you have any questions, you can contact me through the course website or through the contact me section of my blog. Have a great day.